spoiler warning. The following discussion will contain spoilers. We recommend checking out the movie first, then coming back to hang with us. But, if you don't care about that, glad to have you here. Alright everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Real Review. My name's Kevin. I'm John. And we are your real movie guys. It's March, so that can only mean one thing. Real March Madness. It's a tale as old as time, Pixar vs. Disney. In a brawl to end it all, we have selected eight films from each studio. A total of 16 movies will battle it out head-to-head for superiority. On today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at Pixar's Monsters, Inc. In order to power the city, monsters have to scare children so that they scream. However, the children are toxic to the monsters, and after a child gets through, two monsters realize things may not be what they think. Now, John, when, when you were a child, did you have a monster in your closet? I don't really remember. Actually. You don't remember? I don't think so. Do any of your kids, any of your children have monsters in their closet? Has, has that come up? Has that been a conversation? No, I always thought it was more like monsters under your bed or something. Right, right. So, like, the whole closet thing always seemed like like a cool kind of little concept of, like, where the monster could be staying and stuff. And I'm glad you said that because we're jumping right into that. Pixar's at it again. They took an imaginative idea and built upon it. And they built a crazy, fantastic world. Monsters Inc. really stands out in a lot of ways because this movie, it's a simple concept of a monster in its closet. Someone said, let's take that. And we said, what's on the other side of the door? Now, Pixar's done this already. We saw it with Toy Story where they said, what do your toys do when you're not paying attention? Well, here's what do your monsters do when they're not scaring you? Or why are they scaring you popping out of your closet? The first thing you have to admire about Monsters Inc., is physically and mechanically this world works on a ridiculous amount of levels for me and also i think that the way that they did it with each monster how they're done each differently they did them very well like each monster they seem like they took time with it to make it how a real monster could be scaring it's like an interesting class system almost where there's the mon like you said the scary monsters and then the monsters that kind of help out those monsters, they're not so scary. Like It's like a really a class system that was built between monsters there. From the point where you just first meet Mike and Sully and they're living in an apartment together and they're walking down the street, you have like the giant like chicken Godzilla monster walking through the street. Hey, Ted! Good morning! <laughs> See that, Mikey? Ted walking to work. Big deal! Guy takes five steps and he's there. That monster exists in this world with those monsters. I feel like there's really not two monsters that look alike in this movie. And you have to give Pixar a lot of credit for that, for making as a myriad of designs as they did with these monsters, because they all, they don't feel too scary. So kids aren't going to be put off by how they look. Like they kind of have like an element of silly to the way they look, but you could see how they could be scary. Like, even just take some of the monsters, the size comparison Mm -hmm. of them to, like, the little children, and you can see, like, how that could be scary. Like, you wake up in the middle of the night to see that right in your face scaring you. You can understand that seems realistic, you know? And back to, like, the whole world itself, it's more aimed at adults than it is at children because the narrative is very adult-centric. I would honestly compare this to almost like The Office for monsters in some ways. You you can definitely see like that kind of concept where the monsters are just going about their day and this is their job. Like we have to go to work and these are the shenanigans we have to deal with. This movie really captures that spirit, especially for the adult themes where they have to go to work and then something doesn't go right. Is their job right for them? Are they truly doing what they believe and what they care about? So get this, as if dinner wasn't enough. I'm taking it to a monster truck rally afterwards. Nice. What's on your agenda? I'm going to head home and work out some more. Again? You know, there's more to life than scaring. It's not so out of the loop of children where they can't understand it because they, they like the characters. They like the silly moments. They have all their things for them in there. But I think there's really a narrative that really speaks to adults in this movie, more so than the movies that have come before it. We're working for a better tomorrow. Today! We're Monsters Incorporated! Where am I? Monsters Incorporated. We scare. 
because we care. I can't believe it. Oh, Mike. I was on TV! Ah, did you see me? I'm a natural! Hello? I know! Hey, wasn't I great? Did the whole family see it? It's your mom. <laughs> what can I say? The camera loves me. So the story, again, we, we said it's a typical, like, office-esque kind of storyline. What makes it really work, you may ask? The voice actors. Pixar has this thing where they pick these people that truly exemplify the characters they're trying to play. Billy Crystal, to play Mike Wazowski. Billy Crystal we just talked about and when Harry met Sally recently, so... He brings a lot of that charm and charisma I think we love from that movie. He brings in the Mike Wazowski. He's the ever sarcastic. You hear it? You hear the wind? I mean, what a creep. One of these days, I am really going to let you teach that guy a lesson. Like the straight funny man. Like the comedy really falls on Mike. Oh, hi! We're rehearsing uh, a scene for the upcoming company play called uh, Put That Thing Back Where It Came From or So Help Me. <laughs> it's a musical. <laughs> Yeah, put that thing back where it came from, or so help me. So help me, so help me, and cut. <laughs> he really carries that. And then you have John Goodman, who's in himself is a giant lovable man, but he's a sully, giant lovable carpet. She can't stay here, this is the men's room. That is the weirdest thing you have ever said. <laughs> he really brings that kindness and compassion. Nothing's coming out of your closet to scare you anymore, right? Uh. Yeah. Goodbye. Kitty. Kitty has to go. Those characters just really work well together. Right from the minute we see them together just hanging out, you understand their dynamic together. That they really are friends. We don't have to worry about the whole building a friendship storyline because we start off the movie, they are friends, and they keep that for the most part, a very strong thread throughout this movie. And you can see how good of a friendship that Mike and Sully have together where, like, they're almost like teammates for life. Even when Mike is gonna go out on the date and Sully kind of comes there, you see that Mike almost takes, like, his look away from her to, like, just concentrate on, like, what Sully's problem is. You're ruining everything. I went back to get your paperwork and there was a door. What? The bros before hoes. That's right. <laughs> Steve Buscemi's in this film playing Randall Boggs, the creepy chameleon like monster. I think he's really good. And now Steve Buscemi, when you hear Steve Buscemi's voice, you automatically get like an ick feeling when he talks. What's this? Wazowski! Ah! <laughs> what do you know? It scares little kids and little monsters. I wasn't scared. I have allergies. Uh-huh, sure. Don't know what it is. I feel bad for the guy because he is, I think, a really nice guy in real life. But whenever I hear his voice, I always equate him as the villain or someone who's just, like, negative in a lot of ways. While he isn't the most active antagonist in this movie, he, he has some scenes where I think he is genuinely creepy, especially when he disguises himself. He goes invisible and he's creeping around or some of his, like, jump scares that he has. He's a good character, and I really like him. Again, I don't know how much he really adds to the movie as far as character, but... As far as a villain, I, I like him. I like his design, and I, I love Steve Buscemi, so that those two work for me. Do you hear that? It's the winds of change. In this kind of movie, I feel like it would have been hard to make an antagonistic character that would stand out. In it a is, way. right. Because I don't think that main thing is like a hero versus a villain in this. No, it's more. really the world versus itself with what yeah. they have to do as far as getting scares and then finding out scares aren't effective and that laughter is actually more effective. It's kind of like a socio-economical or just really economics in general kind of battle going on of what they need to do to sustain their society. It's like a bigger scale of, a, of an issue in this film. Some of these movies, you would think that they would just go from Sully and Mike's house to like work, but they kind of show you the whole city outside of it too. This it, was brazen you know, for them, for Pixar. They really haven't done anything like this previously. This movie really set the standard for visiting different areas. We had their apartment, we have the city, the actual company itself, Monsters, Inc., the different worlds they traveled through when they go through the doors, the restaurant. Just again, the world building in general in this movie really works on a lot of different levels. Now, you could have hired an adult to do booze lines you could have just said we'll just get an adult and have her you know do fake kid cries pixar said no we're not doing that they actually followed a young mary gibbs around with a microphone and captured her genuine voice reactions they actually captured 
what her as a child sounded like. And that's the audio they pumped in and used for Boo in this movie. And I think, if anything, that adds such a genuine quality to this movie. Like, just hearing her, like, her little singing while she's doing something. Or, you know, the way she talks to Sully and interacts with him. Uh, what? I want to know what is in my book. It's just a closet. Will you go to sleep? It feels very genuine. I, I find it hard to find a lot of movies where I, I get that same kind of feeling. Usually when you see a kid character, you just, you know, it's just someone doing the lines of a kid character. Very, very seldomly is an actual child doing those lines and behaving naturally and Pixar found like the perfect way to capture that in this film. Honestly, to me, it's one of the funnier Pixar movies, if not maybe the funniest. I, th I think there's a, a little bit of a discussion to be had as far as that. I like a lot of this humor. Now it could be more because I'm more of an adult and I'm starting to see just really some of the jokes come alive, especially like you said, Mike versus Roz when they have their things together with like getting the paperwork done. Oh, I'm going to get it into you. Beautiful. I swear it's going to be done. Wouldn't it be easier if it all just blew away? Don't let it happen again. Yes. Well, I'll, uh, I'll try to be less careless. I'm watching you, Wazowski. Always watching. And the guys are in your paperwork or when they have, even more so now with quarantines happening, there, there's some jokes to be had there with some of the events. When they say, like, we have a 2319 in progress and everyone starts freaking out and everyone's going crazy with... 2319! We have a 2319! With the sock on his back and they have the CDA come in. <laughs> Same thing we have today, Center for Disease Control almost, arguably. <laughs> Again, some weird comparisons going on in this movie. Not trying to say anything, not trying to comment on anything, but <laughs> there's, there's some parallels going on. This movie's just funny. It really is funny. And it's hard to say if it's just my love for Billy Crystal, where it just makes me laugh. I think it works and I, I love the world. I really do. I love how they use doors to go to different places in the world where they open them. It's a child's bedroom and that's where they just go and they can transport themselves. Again, just very, very clever mechanics. And as far as animation is concerned, I think this movie really excels with that. I feel like Pixar found its groove officially with Monsters, Inc., especially with the dynamic they have with Sully's fur. Every Pixar movie, I know there's always something where they, they try to focus on like improving something right there's always something they're trying to improve whether it's a type of texture or just to focus on a particular animation which i think is why pixar is so admired today as it is because they've really excelled in just about every category i feel like they've come to full effectiveness in everything and you can see this is like another building block for them like sully's fur looks like real fur every oh, yeah, time definitely. i see it granted again he's really the only furry character in the movie so there's the only one they had to work with, but they took that down and they said, we're making this stand out. And they really did. Uh, when the snow hits him, when he's in the winter world, like that's like, what am I watching? This looks real. That's really yeah. impressive. Especially considering when this movie came out, there's nothing like this in like the two thousands, especially that early two thousands. That looks just like this. So I do have some negatives. I always do. That's just how I am. I'm a very negative man. Uh, very negative. A couple of negatives just to talk about. <laughs> I want to see how you think about this, John. This movie, as much as I've praised it for the comedy, the story, the world building, there is something that should be discussed a little bit with this film is it can feel like a one trick pony a little bit with its story. And what I mean by that is there's a cycle that happens in this movie over and over and over again. And it really can't be ignored is Boo gets into trouble. Monsters react. Shenanigans ensue. Rinse and repeat. That's pretty much the whole middle of this movie. It's just that cycle over and over again. And it's fun. It's entertaining. I'm having a good time, so I don't truly mind it that much. But I feel like it can't be ignored where that that's pretty much what this movie is. I was thinking of movies that are like this where they have like there were like a lot of movies like in the 90s that were like that, where they had like a child or an animal or something that shouldn't be where it's supposed to be. Like Dunstan checks in. Remember that movie with, with the monkey where he gets into the hotel? They have like oh, that. Yeah. Or uh, Baby's Day Out is another one where the baby's like getting into like a construction site and crazy things are happening. Like something that's not supposed to be in this world 
is in this world and causing shenanigans and everyone's just reacting to it. A lot of the time, Monsters, Inc. really feels like that. While it's telling a really great story and there's a lot of world building, I think, involved, it's hard to argue that sometimes that this just feels like the, the main theme over and over again. There's definitely some pacing issues, too. Again, I, I feel like a broken record. I feel like this is like a major issue with a lot of movies, but it still kind of is, you know, especially... There's a point where I think it really gets to me is when Sully gets tossed into the mountains, him and Mike, and they kind of have the two cliche devices I don't like in a movie. The first one, we says, not friends, but still friends. Like, we're not going to be friends anymore. We should just do this separately. No, there's no we this time, pal. If, if, if you want to go out there and freeze to death, you be my guest. Because you're on your own. I'm over you, blah, blah, blah. And then Mike and Sully, they, they're not friends anymore. Oh, no. But then they're friends again at the end. I'm glad you came back, Mike. Somebody's got to take care of you, you big hairball. <laughs> I hate that. I hate that. That's a cliche. Come on, guys. You can do better than that. Pixar, you have such a world. You have such an imagination. Don't give us that same old cliche over and over again. I don't need it. It would have been more endearing if... Like you said, the bros before hoes kind of thing. Here's the truth. You know the kid that they're looking for? Sully let her in. We tried to send it back, but Waternoose had the secret plot, and now Randall's right behind us, and he's trying to kill us. You expect me to believe that pack of lies, Mike Wazowski? Mike Wazowski. Ah! If they, they stayed friends the whole time, right? Did they really need to have that little, like, towards the end of the movie, like, pseudo breakup? Did we really need that? It would have been better for the characters if they were just still friends, right? That friendship. Because that's how it is. They're still going to be friends. Like, friends argue. Friends have disagreements. But they're not like, we're not going to be friends anymore. It's over. We don't we're not friends. friends. Like, come on. Come on, guys. You can do better than that. <laughs> I expect a little better as far as that storytelling. Is it a huge issue? No. But it is noticeable and it does bother me. And the last one is one I've said so many times on this channel. The liar reveal storyline. It ends up the whole time Mr. Waternoose, who you thought was the good guy, the head of Monsters, Inc., the company, was actually the bad guy all along. Uh, sir, that's not her door. I know. I know. It's yours. <gasps> oh my god. I hate that reveal. I hate the liar reveal so much. <laughs> Just don't do that anymore. Like, can we just move on? There's other stories to tell. I think we're at that point, though. We're going to give our final scores. I'm going to give Monsters, Inc. an A. Slumber party. <laughs> Great movie. Fantastic movie. One of the best, I think, in Pixar's tool belt as far as it comes to their animated projects. The animation, I think, is really coming around to this point where it's top quality. It's really there. The story's fun, relatable for adults, and just as much fun for children, imaginative. Again, they're really still capturing that, that essence, I think, that makes like Disney and Pixar themselves both very special companies where they're able to find an imagination, find a concept, and really expand upon it. Monsters, Inc.'s funny. You're going to have a good time. John, where do you stand with this film? Monsters, Inc. gets a B-plus from me. Well, I don't think that date could have gone any worse. <laughs> It was a really good movie. Definitely funny. Definitely one you have to check out. And a very interesting story told from a monster's point of view or like a young child's point of view. Like young children could understand this very well. And I thought the way that they showed each character and each person was very well done. So right. I, I give it a B plus. All right. Yeah. Monsters Inc. really is a special movie. And it's going to be interesting to see when we have Monsters Inc. go up against Aladdin a little bit later on from Disney. Uh, two very different outings, uh, but a confrontation nonetheless that has to be had. John, where can the people find us at home? You can find us over at The Real Movie Guys on YouTube. Go over there, like our channel, subscribe. Let us know what you thought about Monster Inc. Have you seen it? What's some of your favorite parts to this movie? Also, you can let us know on show us, do you think that this movie may be better than Aladdin or vice versa or what you thought about one of our other reviews for this month you can also tell us over on twitter at the real movie guy on twitter let us know over there too you can interact with us over there we try to get back to you as fast as we can or interact with you as much as we can also you can listen to us on many podcasting platforms such as yes for your listening pleasure we are also available in podcast format itunes spotify anchor google podcast overcast breaker radio public and pocket cast be sure to give us a listen at any of those fine places if you are right now hey 
Greatly appreciate it. Just search out Real Movie Guys. We should pop right up. Thank you again all so much for joining us for this episode of The Real Review. My name's Kevin. That guy over there, he is John. We are your Real Movie Guys. Real guys, real movies, real thoughts. The battle rages on as Real March Madness Disney versus Pixar continues. We'll catch you next time. Mike Lazowski. Why are you still here? Come on, go! Move now!